Yeah. You did. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some, some choir members, just my wonder away. We didn't really, really. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Chaotic. Everyone on this side of the cross. Oh, you can hear me. Hello. <laughs> At least in there. <laughs> the cross is going to go this way. So if you guys don't mind <laughs> coming this way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do my thing as soon as we start singing. Okay. We'll go that way. Yeah. You. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm gonna follow you. You're the cross. Oh, I'm the cross. Yeah. <laughs> so just follow, go down the aisle, put it back where it belongs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm sorry we can't be outside in this bluster, but it's probably for the best. But we still will process as we begin our Palm Sunday worship this morning. Uh, a couple of real quick instructions for when we get to the procession. When we get to our processional hymn, that's when we'll start walking. We are all going to follow this cross through these back doors. Don't go here, friends. <laughs> We're all going to follow this cross through the back doors. And then as you make your way through the center aisle of the sanctuary, you can find your seats. All right? So we're still going to process a little bit as much as we can. Um, our Zoom friends are joining us on Jerry's phone, so don't stand right in front of her and block their view, choir. <laughs> um, and I'm sure she'll keep a great angle for us. So welcome, folks on Zoom. Good morning. Uh, and that's all I got. So let's begin. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Let us pray. We praise you, O oh God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King. By those who spread garments and branches along his way, bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. <laughs>
Good morning again and welcome. I'm Pastor Hannah Di Pasquale. If we haven't had the chance to meet, please do introduce yourself after worship. I would love to get to know you. Welcome to any folks who are joining us on Zoom. We are glad that you are here today. Here at Peace Lutheran Church, we welcome all people to full participation in the life of the church, regardless of race or ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, physical or mental disability, or any other identity that you have. Know that you are welcome to show up here as your full self and to participate fully in the life of our worship life together and the life of the church. And we are so glad that you are joining us on this, our first day of Holy Week. I, that's all the welcome I'm going to do for now. I'm going to have Joel come up as our council rep, and then I'll share a little bit more about this week. Good morning. Good morning. You can read the announcements for yourselves. They're on the uh, pretty pastel colored sheet here, just for, in time for Easter. Um, <laughs> it's I wanna, Lent. It's Lent purple. <laughs> that's right. Um, I want to bring up two announcements to your attention. Number one, the Easter potluck brunch is next week. Um, be sure to sign up for that. We need plenty of food because we'll have plenty of people. So we encourage you to come and partake, partake in that. The other thing was that we are setting up a spring cleaning day for April 13th, I believe, at 8.30 in the morning. That's a Wednesday, or sorry, Saturday. Um, and after today's wind, there will probably be some dust and other stuff to clean up. So please join us in two weeks for the Easter, uh, the week af no, two weeks after uh, <laughs> spring cleaning day. All right, thank you. Yes, with new life and Easter comes spring cleaning. <laughs> so thank you, Joel, and for all your work on the property and beyond that you do for us. So this week with Holy Week, I wanted to bring your attention to uh, our events for this week and encourage you to join us. Um, so the next thing that we will have, don't come on Wednesdays, even though we've been coming on Wednesdays through Lent. Um, use that day to prepare your hearts for the three days in whatever way you want to on your own. <laughs> um, but on Thursday, we will have a service here in the sanctuary and available on Zoom. Uh, that will be a communion service. We will also have washing of feet and hands, um, which is optional, but you are encouraged to come and participate um, in the whole service, including that ritual of feet washing, which represents what Jesus did to serve his disciples and empowers us as we go out to serve the world. And then at the end of that service, we will strip the altar to prepare ourselves even more fully for the rest of the weekend. Um, so please join us on Thursday here in the sanctuary at 6 o'clock. And then on Friday, we're doing something a little different. Instead of having a one-time service here in the sanctuary, the sanctuary will still be open um, from noon to 6, where you are encouraged to come at any time, if it works for you to come right at noon, or if you want to come at 2 p.m., or at closer to 6 after work. Um, we will have prayer stations set up as the Stations of the Cross. These come from the Lenten resource that we purchased for your devotional. And so if you've been following the devotional, it's, a, it's from the same folks that wrote that. Um, please do join us. It's self-paced, self-guided, but it, very clear instructions will be available. So don't feel like you just have to come and pray, <laughs> although you are welcome to just come and pray in whatever way that you would like in this, sp in this space, if that's how you would like to mark Good Friday. But we will have 10 stations around the sanctuary for you to engage with and participate as well. It could take you 10 minutes. It could take you an hour. It's really up to you to do however much you want to do to mark Good Friday, which is the journey to the cross with Jesus Christ. And so please do come check it out. I know it's a little different, um, but I hope that lots of you can come and participate at whatever time and at your leisure. So please do come and um, check that out on Good Friday. On Saturday, uh, there will be no services here, but we have been invited to join our Episcopalian neighbors. And so at St. James Episcopal, which is the one closest to the university, um, just off Maine and I-10, Google it. <laughs> um, this is St. James. Uh, we'll probably be outside, weather permitting, at least for part of the service. So 
you know, be prepared for that. Um, I will be preaching the sermon. Don't worry, it won't be the same as what you'll hear on Sunday. So come, come to Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> um, but please do come and join in support of our ecumenical community for Easter Vigil. Easter Vigil is, um, is a service of remembering God's story throughout the ages as we prepare our hearts for the resurrection. Um, we will also remember our baptism. We will light the new fire of Easter. Um, so please do come and join and check out what the Episcopals do for Easter Vigil. Um, that's what we'll be doing this year on Saturday. And then Sunday, as Joel said, is Easter Sunday. We will have a brunch potluck afterwards. If you have a potted plant or fl a flower bouquet that you could help to adorn our chancel space, please do bring that. Um, maybe when you come on Good Friday, you can bring your flowers and put them to the side so that we can get them ready for Easter Sunday. Um, and please do come and hear the message of new life and resurrection that we are preparing for this week. So lots going on. This is all printed in your purple announcement sheet. Please do invite a neighbor, um, invite a friend to any of these services, and we hope that you will come and mark this, this journey to the cross and then the journey of the empty tomb with us this week. So all are welcome. Now, I'm going to invite you to rise again in body or spirit as we prepare our hearts for worship. We begin with confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We are caught in the snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Friends, here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on nature, to take on our nature, and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult or spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human kind likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the knee of, name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. At this time, I'd love any kids or anyone feeling young at heart to come forward for a special message. Hey, Jeremiah. We can sit down today. <clears throat> Hi, Ella. Hi, Miguel. Hi. What's your name? Daphne. Hi, Daphne. Good to see you. Anyone else? <laughs> okay. What is this? Yeah? Why are we holding these today? Do you know? Why don't you pass it down so other people can hold it? <laughs> Where's this come from? The yeah. Uh, did it come from a palm tree? No. <laughs> it's supposed to, but these are like our mini palms. <laughs> um, so when Jesus came into Jerusalem, that was a holy city where he had come for worship, they put, the, they put him on a donkey. They put these on the road along with coats that they all had so that the donkey could walk along these branches and these coats. Why do you think they did that? Do you have any thoughts? No. They were on their way to the temple, to church, yeah. But why would they, did everyone ride a donkey and walk on palms to go to church? No. Why do you think they did that for Jesus? Because he was special. Because he was special, yeah, yeah. And so, not only do we have these palm branches, but these are also our palms, right? And so when they came into, you want to hold up your palms for me? You hold up your palms? Hold up your palms. So, like, this is, a, this is a form of praise, right? When we hold up our hands or hold up our palms, and that's kind of what they were doing for Jesus. They said, Hosanna in the highest. Can you say that with me? Hosanna in the highest. And it was like a praise for Jesus. It was almost like they were saying, can you do this with your hand? Jesus, you're number one. Can you say that with me? Jesus, you're number one. <laughs> um, and so when he's coming into the city, they're saying, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus, you're number one. You're number one. But a couple days later, the number one becomes, and we're going to get you. <laughs> I know. So they're all praising Jesus, but then he goes, I'm going to do something else with my finger. They say, we're going to get you. 
we're going to put you on a cross. Can you make a cross with your fingers? Yeah. yeah. What happened on the cross? Jesus died, yeah. So he went from people saying, you're number one, Hosanna in the highest, you're number one, to we're going to get you, and then he dies on a cross. What? And we could have a whole conversation about what that means. But this week, we're starting to think about, I'm going to take that, thank you. (laughs) Um, We're starting to think about what it means to follow Jesus to the cross. Um, And when he died on the cross, it wasn't just, I mean, it was a very sad thing, but he was also showing us how much God loves us. God loves us so much that he would die on a cross, that he would forgive our sins, and that he would be with us even through the hardest things in our, of our lives. Yeah, yeah. God is still with us even when sad things like that happen. And so even in the high times when we're saying, Hosanna in the highest, you're number one. And even in the hard times, like what happened on the cross, God is still with us. And we can still praise God even when things are happy and when things are sad. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. Would you say a prayer with me? All right. Repeat after me. Dear God, help us to praise you in the celebrations and in the hard times. Thank you for showing us your love through your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining me. You can go back to your seats. I hope you all got palms to enjoy today. And we all rise in body and in spirit as we sing to receive the gospel. According to Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the, on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And we pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to hear your word and to obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's Palm Sunday. And today we read and we hear about and we mark what is called the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. That is, Jesus' entry into the holy city on the back of a donkey with cloaks and branches being laid before him with shouts of Hosanna, which means save us. Save us. We hear that from the crowds. This is an entry of a king, however, Instead of an army, there are crowds of diverse people from the city and the countryside. Instead of a war horse, Jesus comes in on a colt. The people are looking to Jesus for their salvation and their hope, and yet 
when Jesus arrives at the temple and they've been shouting, Hosanna, this is the one, Jesus, save us. He doesn't get installed as a king. Instead, he looks around and he leaves town again. (laughs) It's probably what was not expected of these crowds who were crying out and praising Jesus as he came into the city. But Jesus, as we know, does a really good job of doing what's not expected of him, doesn't he? And yet, one thing he's doing here that is expected is he's arriving in Jerusalem for the Passover festival. Like any faithful Jew, he's coming to Jerusalem for the feast. The city is filled with people coming from all over the the region. Yet Jesus is the one, the number one, put on the donkey and given the hosannas as he comes into the city. But he leaves again. But when Jesus comes back into the city, instead of crowds of support, he will encounter angry leaders and skeptics who are convinced that this can't be the one. This can't be the guy. This can't be the Messiah that we've been waiting for. This is not what we've been expecting from the Messiah. Because even though he seems to do signs and miracles, and he seems to have this divine authority, have you seen who he's been interacting with? Have you seen who he's been traveling with? Have you heard what he's been preaching? Have you heard who he's been touching and healing? Yet Jesus is the one who will reveal that God's deep love for the world does not always look as expected. Jesus is the one who will go on to pay the price for his actions done in love. For Jesus is a king whose throne of glory takes the form of a cross. We here today might not have been processing into Jerusalem. (laughs) But this morning, we followed that cross into this space. We sang Hosanna in triumph and joy and gratitude, and it was joyful. But these cries of Hosanna are also ones of protest. Throughout his ministry, Jesus protests the status quo. Jesus protests the social norms that said only some people have access to God. Jesus protests prejudices that kept some people in and some people out. Jesus protested common expectations that said if you're a woman or you're disabled or you're poor, that you're not worthy of love and belonging. His whole life, even until death, was a protest offering an alternate view of a kingdom that aligns with God's values, not the values of the world. So this entry into Jerusalem, it wasn't a war march. It wasn't just a fun parade. It was a protest. Although it might not be one that was expected of the Messiah, Jesus wasn't exactly what was expected of the Messiah. Jesus' way was one, revealing the grace and redemption of God that people were waiting for. Jesus revealed that God seeks power not through domination or violence or war, but through humility and solidarity. God showed up in Jesus, not in expensive kingly outfits or on thoroughbred racehorses or by enacting a war and dominion. God showed up on the cross, a place of suffering and death. And for us now to follow that cross, it's not so that we can feel bad about ourselves or feel unworthy or to sulk in our sin. No. That cross was a place of pain and suffering, but it's also a symbol of hope. But when we follow that cross, we are invited to show up in the world too in unexpected and sometimes hard ways. Living a life of trust in God and Jesus itself is a protest in many ways because it's easier to trust in worldly things that give us what we think we deserve and in worldly things that give us what we can see and feel and touch But instead, we live our own lives of protest, saying, no, we're going to live in ways that seek humility and solidarity, who goes to the, a way that goes to those who are suffering rather than ignoring them or continuing suffering. 
We say that instead of living in ways that seek to dominate or hurt or exclude, instead we lean into the same humility and solidarity that Jesus did. So for us to follow the cross of Christ means to protest the ways of the world which still embrace powers of evil rather than life. To follow the cross of Christ is a protest that says, no matter what the world thinks of you, God claims you as beloved. To follow the cross of Christ is to protest systems and political structures that try to deny folks basic human dignity and rights. To follow the cross of Christ is to protest a culture that says you must have money or education or be a certain race or love a certain gender or worship in a certain way to have God's favor. To follow the cross of Christ is not just about entering a comfortable building out of the wind and then leaving unchanged. (laughs) Instead, to follow the cross of Christ is to protest the things that go against the character of Christ, of the one who hung on the cross. We come here to be restored in that protest promise that God has revealed to us through Christ, the one who protested death itself, not by avoiding it, rather by humbling himself, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. I'm going to share a quick story with you. This past Thursday, Michael and I made a trip down to El Paso. We participated in a different type of protest. Following a cross to, through the streets of downtown El Paso, we joined in the March for Human Dignity, organized by the Catholic Diocese, and participated in by several other faith leaders and nonprofits from around the borderland. Together, we made public witness to and restored our own commitments to honoring the human dignity of all our neighbors, especially migrants, and especially regardless of nationality or immigration status. Thousands of people showed up to march through the streets, and then we gathered at Sacred Heart Catholic Church for worship and vigil. And at the church, the names of 40 migrants who had died in a fire in Juarez about a year ago, were named 40 souls whose lives were cut too short while they waited in detention. As each name was read, a candle was lit. A candle was lit for each soul under the gaze of this icon of Saint and Bishop Oscar Romero. Oscar Romero, too, was the Bishop of El Salvador, and he was killed in an unjust act of violence after he aligned himself with the pleas of the poor and the oppressed of his country. In fact, today, March 24th, marks exactly 44 years to the day that he was assassinated. As a bishop, Oscar Romero could have done with all the power in his grasp. He, could, he had the chance to either use this power to continue per- perpetrating harmful rhetoric and actions happening against the poorest in his country, or he could use his power to stand with the poor and the oppressed, to speak out against violence, and to preach about a God who stands with those on the margins. Bishop Romero chose the latter, making his ministry a protest, and he died because of it. As we enter this Holy Week, I invite you to join Jesus in his protest. We join Jesus not as just some historic figure of the past that we like to remember once a year, but as one who walked in solidarity with the poor and the oppressed. Jesus as a king who didn't assume a place of domination, but came to know for himself a place of death and pain. As we consider our own hosannas, save us. And as we consider those who are still crying out, save us. May we consider those in our lives and in our worlds and in our streets who still cry out in very real situations, Lord, save us. As we ponder the face of Jesus this week, we must also see the face of Jesus in the face of our neighbors. As we ponder the pain of Jesus this week, we must also see the pain of our neighbors. 
Holy Week is an invitation into the depth and the humanness of it all. Not to drive us into a place of shame or guilt, but to drive us into a closeness and a nearness with the one who put on flesh and went all the way to death to reveal God's solidarity with all of us. God's solidarity with all of us, especially with those whose backs are against the wall, those who are still crying out for justice. I'm going to close us with a poem from our devotional book to be our invitation into this holy week. I wonder if Jesus could feel his heartbeat in his throat the way I do when I'm afraid. I wonder if he had to take deep breaths in through his nose, out through his mouth, tricking his body into a state of calm. I wonder if he was nauseous, like I am, when I'm headed into a hard conversation. I wonder if he had to summon his courage, tucking fear away so he could hold on to what mattered most with both hands. I wonder, because time has taught us that it is not uncommon for a peaceful protest to start or end with an unjust death. So I wonder, did he know? Was he afraid? Did anyone see it? I want to hold what matters most with both hands. Amen.
confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and to your glorious, glorious victory of resurrection, who lives and reigns. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm doing the wrong prayer. Trusting, God, trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church and the well-being of the creation and the world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and to death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Be with our nation as we struggle through conflict in our government. Hold to account any authority to judge others. Grants, grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Bring hope to any of those who fear forsaken or forgotten. Pray for healing for Ken Martin, Lejeune Smith, and Betty Dirk. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O oh God. Give energy to our pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, confirmands, and teachers. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O God. We pray for birthdays of those in our congregation, including Debbie Sarabia and Gary Stevens. Bless our blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. We give thanks for the courage of Oscar Amalfo Romero, bishop and martyr, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, O God. And we pray for saints of the church, including Hans Nielsen Haig, renewer of the church, and saints of peace, including Edith Holenrake, Elmer Whitney, Orville Crossland, Janelle Wood, Marvin Tesnier, Estelle Williams, and Burton Afnis. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Okay. <laughs> um, never pray too much. <laughs> We receive uh, the offering of our musicians and we lift up our offerings to God through our tithes and donations. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
prayer. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with the hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so now, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it. 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He poured it out for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine so that we who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all the saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. and voices and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, here at Peace Lutheran, we welcome all to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. This table is open to anyone desiring the grace and reconciliation poured out here, regardless of your age or church membership or where you're feeling in your faith today. You are welcome to bring yourself, your doubts, your trust, your hope, whatever you are carrying to this table. All are welcome here. We gather at the front here um, for those who are able. There are empty cups in the trays, which you take a cup with you to the rail where you can kneel or stay standing or do whatever is most comfortable. And then we have um, first the bread. We also have gluten-free wafers available if you prefer that, just let me know. And we have both wine and grape juice. Just let our servers know which you prefer. Um, and take the cups and put them in the baskets as you return to your seats. If you would like to come up but not receive the elements, if you cross your arms like this, I'd be happy to just give you a blessing. Also, if you'd like to participate in communion but um, don't want to make your way to the front and are more comfortable staying where you are, you can stay where you are, and we will bring communion to you at the end. Friends, this is the table of Christ. This is where Christ's love and grace is poured out for all people, and there is a place for you here. So please come and receive. Yeah.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Share your bread. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.